Welcome to the Full Armor of Game. Put on the Full Armor of Game, the best dating podcast out there, teaching men about women, relationships, the psychology of women, how to be a player. We teach you the real game. I am the czar of dating. Also with us, the Texing Prince. Today's episode number 27. We're giving the people what they want. We've gotten several messages about this one, several comments on our social media as well. How do you set boundaries with women? Setting boundaries with women. You bring the crowns and heads of conquered kings to my city steps. You insult my queen. You threaten my people with slavery and death. This is Sparta! Put on the whole armor of game. Fellas, if women have high standards for men, men need to have high boundaries for women. I can't stress this enough. You need to have boundaries for women and make sure that you live by those boundaries. I live by a code with my boundaries written down. And if she violates any one of my boundaries, I'm calling her out on her negative behavior and I'm checking her on it. Now, me and the texting prince taught you guys how to check a woman on disrespectful behavior. We have another podcast for that we did earlier. Check that one out. You don't wait. You don't wait a week. You don't wait a couple days. You don't text her and say, hey, listen, I, I really don't like the way you spoke to me that, that one day, that Friday. They've already forgotten about it. They moved on, fellas. You check a woman right then and there as it happens. You don't fucking wait. That's cowardice. Be a man about it. If she continues that disrespectful behavior, I unplug the controller and I end the game until she comes back and apologizes. Every man should do this with his life. I, I want you all to write down your own rules, boundaries, and your own principles that you live by. That's what I did. When I started doing that, I would read them every week, and no woman could ever negotiate those boundaries that I have. We don't negotiate with terrorists, fellas. As someone in my Discord channel always says, shout out to Jay, really cool dude. He always says, I don't negotiate with terrorists when a woman tries negotiating certain boundaries he has or when she wants to kind of pottle around the boundaries that, that he sets or the, uh, the, the principles that he has. We don't negotiate with terrorists. You can never let a woman get away with crossing your boundaries. Let me tell you guys something about behavior, and this is coming from someone who reads a lot of psychology books, just like the Texting Prince does. One thing you guys have to understand, and this goes back to B.F. Skinner. He was a master at behavioral psychology, conditioning, operant conditioning, reward and punishment. You can never let a woman get away with crossing your boundaries because let me tell you something, behavior either gets better or it gets worse. Behavior is never static. It's dynamic. That's why this is so important. So if you don't check a girl on a certain disrespectful behavior, guess what? Oh, wow. I can get away with that. Let's see what else I can get away with. It's similar to you showing up late to work five minutes late. Your job starts at eight o'clock. You show up at 8.05. What naturally happens if your boss doesn't check you on it? He doesn't say anything. Wow, he didn't say anything that I was five minutes late. Let me show up 10 minutes late now, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Then it becomes 30 minutes. This is what happens with behavior. Women test men in order to see his strength as a masculine man. The fact of the matter is this, fellas. Women test men and men test theories. This is how it's always going to be. Yeah, well said. And uh, I think this is going to be a fun podcast because we both enforce our boundaries, but we probably do it in different ways. Like I've mentioned before, my game is much more Sigma. And what I mean by Sigma is like I have no desire to control others, but I also have zero desire to be controlled by others. 
So the way that I set up my boundaries and Zar sets up our boundaries will be different and you can kind of pick and choose, but I've heard Zar talk about the boundaries and I think they're great boundaries to have. The way that I enforce my boundaries is just a little different. I have my boundaries up, but to me, they're almost invisible. They're like my own guidepost and I'm using my boundaries to basically um, judge the character of the woman I'm with. So in other podcasts, we've talked about how you've got to let women feel like it's a safe space for her to explore herself and let herself out there. And that's kind of the same way I, I think about boundaries is I have my boundaries in place, but I'm not necessarily going to put them out there right up front when I first meet a girl to let her know my boundaries. I'm going to have my boundaries out there and I'm going to right, let her feel safe for her to express herself so I can start to kind of see what type of character of a woman I'm dealing with. And then if she crosses one of my boundaries, that is when she'll see the negative rewards by me pulling back, by me not giving her attention, me not giving her validation. So she's going to find out my boundaries in, in a certain way. She's going to find out Zara's boundaries in a different way. But with women, you do have to have boundaries exactly like Zar said, because if you're if you get used to doing something a certain way, it's a lot harder to pull back on that in the future, like showing up late for work. So setting boundaries, having boundaries in place is always important. And then how you go about enforcing those boundaries can kind of depend on your more of your temperament as a man of how you like to kind of put those out there and put those boundaries on her. There's more than one way to skin a cat, fellas, but you have to find your niche. Find out what works for you as a masculine man, whether you're Sigma Alpha, you never want to be a passive beta male about it. If you're too scared to express your boundaries or put a girl in check, tell her, no, don't raise your voice at me. I don't talk to people that raise their voice. When you want to calm down and you're ready to talk to me like an adult, you let me know. There's always a way to say that, but you don't want to be a simp about it and be scared to express yourself. That's when you're being a beta male simp. You're too scared because you might offend this girl. You might hurt her. But guess what? I'm never going to let a woman talk to me like that if she's going to raise her voice. And I'll give you a great example, Adam. And this is why it's important for you guys to establish your boundaries. In the beginning, you lay down the law in the beginning when first dating a woman. I'm giving you guys an example. This is from my relationship ebook. Once again, we're starting our seminar March 6th, our five-week coaching seminar where you meet with me and the Texting Prince Live. You'll get this course. You'll get this course once you sign up. All the courses are included. Why is it important to establish boundaries in the beginning when first dating a woman? You place yourself in the ideal position to gauge her level of interest for you. So let's say you set a boundary of a woman being on time when showing up to a date. When showing up to a date late by saying, man, I could have sworn the date was at 8 o'clock and not 8.30. And she blows up emotionally and never wants to see you again. Consider dodging a bullet with that woman, fellas. That relationship would have never fucking worked out in the long run of things. You just saved yourself months of stress and dealing with a headache from a woman who isn't compatible or compliant with you or your boundaries of her being on time during a date. She would have never respected you and caused you hell by being pugnacious constantly. On the contrary, if you set a boundary with her in the beginning and she stays around to still see you, that means she is very interested in you and receptive to your boundaries as a man. She obviously respects you as a man who has standards and has boundaries. Rarely have I ever come across a woman who disrespected me without accepting my boundaries, fellas, but there are those certain few women. Men can be trash. Certain women can be trash as well. We understand that. But the irony of setting boundaries with women is not being afraid to express them, is that she becomes even more attracted to you because of your honesty and self-respect. These are the women who will be more than happy to submit to your leadership compared to the women who will never submit to you. You will see great examples of establishing boundaries with a woman throughout this podcast. She gains more admiration for you because she now knows that if you will stand up for her and protect her if anything happens in the outside world, okay? Wait, let me rephrase that. 
She knows that if you stand up for yourself as a man, she knows that you will stand up for her and protect her if anything happens to her in the outside world. It starts with you having boundaries and standing up for yourself as a man. That way, this woman can now trust you. She knows you're about that life. When you stand up to her, she will automatically stand up. When, when She knows if you stand up to her, like her being late on a date, you will automatically stand up for her because you're not afraid of demanding respect. I hope you guys understand that. I know I fumbled over a couple words. Listen, it happens. But that's very important, especially if a girl has her phone out during a date. And Adam, you see this on plenty of dates when you're out at certain bars, venues. The girl's sitting there on her phone and the guy's too scared to say anything. In her mind, what is she telling herself? Wow, if he can't even stand up for himself, how is he ever going to stand up for me in the outside world? That's what goes through a woman's fucking head. That's exactly what goes through her head subconsciously. He's a coward. If some guy grabs my ass on the middle of a street, he's not going to stand up for me. He's not going to do anything. Yeah. Yeah. And again, like that for the phone on the date thing, I think we've talked about this before, but like if a girl was doing that, I would lead by example by having my phone put away. And if she still has that out and I'm like, you know, if, if we're a couple minutes into the day and I see that she still has her phone out and that that is, you know, like that's her entertainment for the night when i'm sitting across from her that's when i will i won't freak out and go you should not be out in your phone on a date or whatever i will just politely get up maybe we're drinking a beer i'll finish the beer i'm like hey all right i'm gonna go it looks like you're busy i got some things to do as well so i'm gonna head out nice to meet you and that, at that point i would get up and walk away now that she might not go oh he's enforcing these boundaries on me or whatever but she would understand she would replay it in her head and go why did he just end the date already like that? And then she would think about, oh, yeah, I was on my phone, all that type of stuff. And then she would still learn my boundaries. But at that point, I'm already gone. And now she's going to have to work, work, work to get me back into her life. And if I were to ever see her again, then at that point, my expectation is she knows she's not going to be on her phone when we're hanging out. If that happened again, then I'm done again. And that time, I'm not giving her any other uh, secondary chances. But that is where I'll have my boundary out there and I am going to enforce it, but I'm going to let her find out her bo my boundary in a sense on her own that way. And then if she can't figure it out, it's like, I'm not going to sit here and teach an old dog new tricks every step along the way. I'm just gone. I'm out of there. And I'm not going to freak out and tell her how disrespectful she was. I am just going to leave peacefully. Hope you have a good night. Looks like we both have other things on our mind that we want to get you know done tonight. And then I'm walking away and letting her learn her negative consequences by she no longer gets to see me. She doesn't get my attention and validation in that way. Now, what's the difference between having boundaries and nitpicking? So let's say that same girl you're out on a date with, she pulls out her phone, but she tells you, I'm sorry, it's it's an emergency. I just have to text someone quickly. Guys don't understand that, right? That's OK. Yeah. It's OK, yep. guys. You don't have to nitpick every little thing. No girl wants a control freak. Yeah. They, especially if you haven't earned it. They, they don't know you from a hole in the fucking wall. But you setting your boundaries and you telling her if she's constantly on her phone or if she pulls out her phone and looks at her, she's scrolling through social media. I'll say something like, I thought me and you were hanging out tonight. If you want me to leave you alone with your, with your phone so you guys can have a better relationship, I can do that. I'll walk out right now. Yeah. That's but I'm a not good saying it in an angry way. It's a good, a very good example because her scrolling social media, there's no, there's no need she needs to do that in the middle of the date. But her pulling out her phone and going, looking at, and this is stuff like this will happen with women. It's like she pulls out her phone, she looks at me, she goes, "Hey, I'm really sorry. I don't want to take this right now. I just, I, I had some things at work and I knew I was going to get a phone call. It's like, do you mind if I take this for a couple minutes? Like if she presents it in that way and she's being self aware, she's being aware that we're on a date." Hey, I'm really sorry. This, you know, it wasn't supposed to happen. She says that in that way, I'm much more cool. But if she's sitting there scrolling on social media, like Zara said, then I'm like, what are we here for? There's no reason we're here for. I'm not going to waste my time. I'm out of here. So there's a big difference when you're dealing with women and paying attention and, and how aware she's being while she's doing it as well. Or like, she's like, 
Hey, I'm so sorry. You know, my, my mom's in the hospital or my mom's sick or something like that. Like, I just, I need to make sure if there's an emergency, I have it out and she, maybe she has her phone by her side, but she's not looking at it. That's, you know, that's a reasonable excuse. I'm not a crazy, but like that makes sense. But if she's telling me that then scrolling on Instagram, that doesn't make sense. That's not congruent with her story anymore. So at that point, I'm like, yeah, I'm out of here. I'm done. Now, what if that same girl, you're out on a date with her, Adam, and I want everyone to listen carefully because you'll get different opinions from other dating coaches about this, which I don't agree with. She starts flirting with the waiter. Blatantly, right in front of you, she starts flirting with the waiter, and you know she is. By the way, she's smiling, the energy. She gives you that look as well, as if she's kind of testing you. How do you how do you react to that? How do you play that? Yeah, it, I think it depends too on how well you know the girl. If it's a first date or you're still getting to know her, that's a different story than if you've been seeing her for a while and you know that that's just completely disrespectful because some girls will test men, right? Some girls are testing guys' confidence. So if that came and it was a first date and I saw that, I'd, I'd kind of look at it and be like, oh man, you guys are hitting it off. Hey, like I know the guy, like I, I can put a good word in here. I can, hey, we'll switch roles. I'll go make some drinks, make some good money on tips. I got you here. Like, I'll set you guys up. I'll put a good word in and I'll overly play it like I'm not jealous. And then I'm just kind of gauging her reaction. Cause again, that in a way is sort of enforcing my boundary. Like, I can see you're flirting with this guy, but I'm not letting it, you know, lose my cool. Versus if this girl and I had been seeing each other a while and now we're going out and she's trying to give some other attention to a guy, that's when I'm like, <laughs> you don't want to play this game with me. Like mm -hmm. I'll go, I'll go flirt with every other girl in this bar and leave you here by yourself. If that's really like, I won't say that to her, but that's my mentality. If she's going to try to do something like that to me. So I think it depends on how well you know her. Um, but again, if I'm seeing a girl for any period of time, she sees, she starts to learn my boundaries as I hang out with her and that's just not acceptable. So I don't even know what her motive would be, but if she was trying to get a rise out of me, I wouldn't give it to her. I would just walk up and I'll be like, you know, here's, here's $10 for the drinks. Or I would even make, maybe make her pay, I guess in that case. But yeah, I guess those scenarios don't come up with girls I'm seeing, but on a first date or something like that, I play it cool. I'm like, I'm not the jealous guy. I'm going to hook you guys up. And then again, though, I'm judging her character the whole time. How is she playing into that? Is she going, Oh, this is fun. I'm going to flirt harder with this waitress and see and it's like, okay, I just gave her my boundaries, sort of. I'm watching her character, and now she is trying to take that to another level and trying to overly flirt with this guy for me. It's like, at that point, I'm like, this is, you're just playing with a ticking time bomb, and it's about to blow up in your face because I'm out of here. I'm gone. Yeah, I've never had a girl do that to me. Yeah. Flirt with the waitress purposely. I've never had a girl blatantly try to disrespect me like that. I wonder how I would play it if that ever did happen. It's never happened to me before, but if it ever does, I will tell you guys how I played it, her reaction, and the outcome to it. But I do agree with Adam. If it's the first date, I don't really know this girl. I can honestly fucking care less. <laughs> That's just honestly me. I can care less. As long as she comes over after, whatever. If I don't look at her as relationship material, girlfriend material, I don't care. <laughs> Literally don't care. Okay. But that's just me, fellas. So you set your boundaries as soon as possible with a woman. If she does something that you don't like or approve of, bust her balls. Be honest and direct. Lay down the law in the beginning with her. Mean what you say and say what you mean. Always stick to your guns. She will respect you for that, fellas. Okay. Now we can start with our specific boundaries that I think... Every man should live by. I live by these. I'm sure the texting prince, Adam as well, lives by these. We've all heard this one before. Number one, absolutely no male friends, even if they're gay. I will not allow any opportunities for a man to trespass my woman. It is highly disrespectful. A woman might call you out and say you're being insecure, but guess what? That's a shaming tactic that's been normalized throughout the years. It has nothing to do with being insecure but has everything to do with being protective of your investment. Most men know this, but are too afraid to say anything out of fear of being called insecure. Instinctively, a girl having a bunch of guy friends doesn't sit well in any man's gut. 
you have that feeling. The guys that allow their woman to have guy friends, you can just tell there's something churning in, in their gut, in their inner gut. That instinct just doesn't it it doesn't sit well. There's a reason for that. Okay. Because it's absolutely absurd and fucking disrespectful. But the fear of being called insecure or the fear of being ridiculed overrides that unsettling feeling in your gut, fellas. That's what you've been programmed. We've been brainwashed to believe it's insecure behavior, which is bullshit. Don't be a beta male mangina. The second you allow her to have guy friends is the second she doesn't respect you. She knows you have no boundaries. If a girl isn't willing to give up her guy friends for the better of the relationship, then what did Tate say? I remember Tate talked about this. She was going to fucking cheat on you regardless. And he's absolutely right. It's only a matter of time. She's literally going to choose her male friends over you. Now, imagine if the roles were reversed. Exactly. No girl would want you having a bunch of women as just friends. I rest my case. Yeah, so I guess I, my only question is what would be your why? Why would you mind about the gay friend thing? Because I've seen girls that have gay friends and I know how wild gay guys are especially that, okay that, that's what women. i was thinking too is it the lifestyle there the lifestyle the party party the clubbing up, all that yeah okay so that, that even like going to drag shows there's just a lot of hormones and sexual energy flying around you know women are always in the moment they base their yeah. they they base their actions via their emotions when they're in the moment why would i want to ruin my investment. Yeah, that I, I I see that point. That makes sense. And yeah, it's I guess in a sense too. If she's going out with gay friends, it's kind of like a girls' night out because gay guys. I I played club volleyball in college, and seventy percent of the club volleyball players in the different leagues were gay. Like it was like this whole gay like network. They all knew each other from all the different teams, and so we would go out. We'd travel to different um colleges and play volleyball and when these guys went out they got wild they got real wild like a like a girls night out type of group where they're just going out and partying and all that so <laughs> i know exactly because <laughs> i used to I, I used to work with someone i was close with them he was a gay dude who worked there and these girls would go out with them to these drag shows and i would see videos and they would get hammered a lot of alcohol a lot of hormones flying around a lot of sexual energy and i thought to myself i would never want my girl to be in this position i would never want her surrounded by this environment period yeah you know this is an interesting point too because i've wondered about the the whole guy friends thing too and i want to hear czar like when you would set that up how early on and you know perfect how you would and, and because I want guys to sit here and realize because I've heard this from both sides too because I hang out with so many women and women like to throw that controlling card oh he won't let me be with my male friends but I'm also in the group of a bunch of buddies where we have some girls that have boyfriends from time to time and then when we all hang out together and we're partying well I already know with my group of other buddies how many other buddies in that group want to sleep with that girl with that boyfriend? They all want that girl. And it's like, oh, oh, so when she comes over, it's funny. Like, even when we're all guys, we're hanging out and we got a couple girls coming over. We don't want them to invite their boyfriends. It's like, no, don't invite your boyfriend. That's no fun. Like, that's just kind of our circle, too. Like, when you're in groups, you don't want some outsider men coming in. And again, me knowing being on the inside of these groups and having these parties where these girls will come over and they are thinking about bringing their boyfriend or not, everyone in the room, all the guys are like, no, don't bring your boyfriend. That's no fun. Well, why? Because we're all going to drink together and we're going to have fun. And the guys that are interested in that girl, they're going to want to shoot their shot when the opportunity comes. And the other side of that is these same girls that have a bunch of guy friends, us. Well, we know too, when they're mad at their boyfriends, they want excuses to throw a party and be like, well, screw him. I'm going to have fun tonight. I'm going to get wild. And now if you get a girl that's mad at her boyfriend and now it's like, well, I'm just going out. I'm hanging out with my friends. Well, now those friends have four or five, six guys that want to sleep with that girl. And she has a reason to be upset about the relationship. It's all too easy for the excuse of alcohol party. Something happened and oh, he kissed me. It wasn't my idea. There's just a lot of entanglements. 
So I definitely see the downside of girls having friends. So now I want to go back to you, Zar. How would you set that up? How early on or how would you introduce that to a girl? Well, first, I like I like how you said entanglements, because that reminds me of Jada Pinkett and Willard Smith, the simp. So I, I love that word now because it makes me think of Will Smith in that interview, the red table. But going back, let's start with why a woman shouldn't have guy friends if you are trying to be in a relationship with her. Let's go back to biblical times. We're going back to Genesis, the Garden of Eden. What happened when Eve was by herself around the tree of knowledge, around all those trees? She couldn't touch the fruit from the tree of knowledge. Guy the came snake, down. The, the snake, snake comes the beautiful out. flying snake. You know, no they had to wings at that from time. The snake. All it took was the most beautiful creature she has ever seen before, who had charm, who had charisma, whispering in her ear. That's all it took. That right there tells me that women are very impressionable. So why would you want her to have guys whispering and chirping in her ear? They're very impressionable, especially if they're young, because I, I was in those situations and it was it wasn't hard for me to get these girls who had boyfriends because I have a good fucking mouthpiece and I have game. Right now, you don't even have to be Satan. You don't need charm or charisma. You could just be an average Joe just in the friend zone with her. And next thing you know, they're hooking up and, and sleeping with each other. Or he's talking shit about you. That's why that's so important. I think God taught us that lesson. If you really dig deep into the Bible and the lessons and the wisdom it has. But I talked about this story with this German girl that I'm still dating to this day. I met her through a dating app. Beautiful girl. In the beginning, when we started talking. I mentioned her not having guy friends. Like, I'm not cool with a girl having guy friends. She went off on me, called me a control freak. Well, you're not going to tell me what to do. Yada, yada, yada. All this bullshit you don't want to hear, right? But I learned a valuable lesson in that. It was too soon. I didn't even build the attachment yet. So this girl is questioning me and saying to herself, who the fuck is this guy to tell me what I can and cannot do? So guys fuck up because they try to establish these broader boundaries too soon. Now the girl thinks you're a fucking control freak. She wants nothing to do with you. But what happened is when I rekindled things with her, because I used an Andrew Tate line, this was like two months later, he said to text a girl that you haven't spoken to in a while. I know you've been cheating on me. And she actually responded. And we were bantering back and forth, role playing. I said, yeah, I saw you with that transgender out at the club. I can't believe you would do that. She started laughing. We started talking again. Then we finally get to hang out several times. I didn't even bring up the guy friends ever again. I knew I, I learned my lesson very quickly. I understand the game. Over time, what happened was after we went hiking, we come back, we grab burgers at this place, beautiful summer day. There was this awkward silence. We had a great day. We're talking awkward silence all of a sudden sitting at the table. Then she randomly brought up the whole guy friend situation. She looks at me and she says, so you seriously wouldn't be with a girl who has guy friends? That's when it hit me. I said, bingo. The attachment has to be built first. And if yeah. the girl really wants to be with you, if she truly desires you and wants to be with you, she can give two, fuck up, two fucks about her guy friends. And if you don't believe me, if you don't believe my story, which is fucking true because I don't bullshit about any stories I have. What happened with Hitler when he went to go live in that bunker as World War II was coming to an end? What happened with Ava Braun, the girl that was dating him that he was seeing? She gave up all her friends, all her guy friends, her family members, even her sister that told her not to go live down there in that bunker with him. She said, screw you to all of them. And she went to go live with Hitler in a dark dungeon of a bunker that didn't have any air conditioning. She couldn't get her tan on. She couldn't go shopping there. She knew she wanted to be with this guy. And she was going to give everything up to be with him. And they ended up dying together. Like, that's how much a girl has to be enthralled with you, fellas. She wouldn't care about giving up her best guy friends to be with you. That just comes natural with a woman. So if a woman wants a relationship 
with you. That's why I tell you guys, don't get in a relationship with the girl. Don't chase her. Don't ask her for a relationship. When she wants a relationship with you, she'll give you the signs. That's when you tell her, okay, if you want a relationship with yeah. me, I have certain boundaries. Absolutely no guy friends, which is the first one we're talking about. If she doesn't even want to give up her guy friends, we're starting with boundary number one, code you should live by. Go like, well, you know what? Listen, I, I can't be with a girl if she's not willing to give up her guy friends for me. You know, sorry, that's just one of my codes. You don't negotiate with terrorists. I don't care if she says, no, but what about my gay friend? I want to keep him. No, no, I'm good. Because let me, gay friends are still programming her mind. They're still chirping in her ear. She's still being, she's still impressionable with her gay friends. It doesn't matter their sexual orientation. It doesn't matter what fucking gender they are. Okay? If they're a fucking hawk, if they identify as fucking SpongeBob, it doesn't matter. Right? That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. Go back to the Garden of Eden and Satan and Eve. So, okay. so then... If I'm hearing you correctly, that is something you would not bring up on a first date. You're waiting until, and I think this is this is important because this is where I kind of prioritize all my eggs in the basket of, right, as a man, your commitment should be really, really hard to earn from a woman. Yes. And that is the key of all of this is instead of getting on the first date, trying to enforce all your boundaries, it's you cannot give a girl your commitment or let her know that you want to be committed to her before she's, it's always got to be her idea and she's got to bring that up. So now you have bargaining chips. So if you try to do that on the first date, good luck. That's going to be those. That's going to be the girl that goes home and says, this guy, this controlling guy on the first date, tried to tell me to get over my uh, guy friends. And now you look insecure and all that stuff versus if you're the guy that is withholding your commitment from her, you can still hang out with her, but you're not exclusively going to give her your commitment. Now you have the bargaining chips that when she comes and says, hey, when are we going to take this to the next level? I really, I want something more serious with you. I don't want you seeing other people. Well, now when it's her idea and you're the one deciding whether you're going to commit to her or not, that's when you can enforce your boundaries and go, hey, man, I, I'm I'm a free man. I like to be free and all that stuff. If I was ever going to settle down and commit to a woman, there's certain things that I would have to have before I would give that type of commitment up. So I think every guy needs to understand this and really hold this in is that, again, when we talk about this all the time, you chasing women, all that stuff. Every time you're chasing women, every time you're, you know, so eager to hang out with her, you're giving her all the power. And now when she has that power in the relationship, there's no wiggle room. Now it's on her terms. So you have to make sure you guard your commitment. That is your biggest thing you can give a woman. So if she wants that commitment, now she's going to have to play by your boundaries, your rules. But if you're the one trying to force that commitment down her throat, there's no way that she's going to sit there and you know agree to all of these different boundaries you're going to have because she's going to be like, whatever, I can do whatever I want and you'll still come back to me. That's how mm -hmm. she will be programmed to behave and think. So again, your commitment is your biggest piece. You cannot give that out. You cannot let her know how much you want to be exclusive with her. It's got to be her idea. And then now you can come with your bargaining chips. Exactly. That's why you never bring up a relationship with the girl. Don't force her into one because you have no power left. You have no leverage. Absolutely none. But on the reversal of it, if she brings up the relationship, this is when you guys can start establishing all these boundaries we're going to list for you. Okay, I have certain codes I live by. If you truly want to be with me, these are the codes. Okay, and the next one, which is very important, guys seem to forget this one. This happened to me, so I learned very quickly to make sure I establish this as a boundary now. No gossiping about our relationship to your family or friends. We don't air out our dirty laundry to anyone else unless it's something positive you have to say about the person. You have to teach your girl that anything negative she says about you will have a negative impact on now how they see her man, how they see you. It will hinder the relationship he has with those close 
those close around you, okay, your family members, friends. So if if we ever fight or have a disagreement, we can forget and still love one another the next day. But sadly, your family, your friends, your siblings, they will never forget what you said about me. I'm the bad guy now. So now begins an unbearable tension every time you are around her friends or family members. This happened to me. So our relationship was never the same because her parents and friends convinced her to leave me after she revealed certain things about myself and the relationship. So instead of talking to me like an adult, she gossiped about me to those close around her. And what do we tell you guys? Women are very impressionable. So her family members, her friends, her siblings, they never forgot what she said about me in a negative light, nor did they ever forgive me. That was the end of our relationship because she actually gave in. They planted seeds in her head to leave me. The shit she was saying about me wasn't even fucking true, number one. But the point here is, if you two have an issue that needs to be resolved, you talk it out together like adults. No one else has to know about your business, okay? In reality, your best friends might not be in your best interest either, especially if they see you too happy together because envy and jealousy reside amongst the very people you believe love you. So if she needs to seek help from a professional, I advise she sees a therapist, okay? If she needs help, tell her to see a therapist. But number one, the the, the issue with this is when they start air Airing out your dirty laundry, they talk about you in a negative light. Anytime you show up to family events or events with her friends, you feel that awkward tension. You can cut it with a knife. Why is that? Because she's been talking shit about you. That's why. Young girls would do this. Young girls especially, they'll do this, Adam. Okay? Young girls will do this because they haven't learned the game yet. Older women, they learn from the past. They don't gossip about the guys they're dating. They learn from this growing up. That's one of the, the pros of dating an older woman. They're more mature. They've been through the game. The young girls, that girl I was dating was only 21. She didn't know better. So she was a fucking chatterbox. She didn't have anyone else to go to. But now if you actually establish this with the girl and tell her, hey, listen, if you have an issue with me or I have an issue with you, let's talk it out like adults. We don't invite a third party. Even if they ask about me, you just say positive things. That's it. Or else you're going to be the enemy if I talk about you to my family and friends. Or I'm going to be the enemy if you talk about me to your family and friends. Yeah, that's, um, yeah, I've had women in my past say something to me like, yeah, my my mom doesn't like you very much. And it's like, what do you mean? She's like, well, I talked to her, you know, we talked about our relationship and blah, 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 and all that. And so when she drops that stuff like that, my mom doesn't, yeah, my mom doesn't like you very much. Or my, my best friend doesn't think I should see you anymore. Right. That's where I'm that, mm -hmm. that alarm bell is going off. And that's when I'm like, like the girls, girls will want to take me to uh, meet their friend group or something like that. Or girls will ask me to be their wedding date and stuff like that. That's when I'll be like, Hey, if you talk bad about me to your friends or your family, they just know I will have zero desire to ever go to be your wedding date. I'll have zero desire to ever go meet your friend group. I'll have zero desire to ever go meet your parents because I don't want to walk into the enemy territory knowing that they have a certain, you know, uh, impression of me because of what she's giving. So when a girl tells me something like that, like, oh, my mom doesn't like me. That's when I'm like, all right, cool. Well, I'm, I don't like your mom. <laughs> well, good. That's how it goes. She doesn't like me. I don't like her now. Like, I don't want to hang out with her. I don't want to meet her. And then that's a little way where girls are realizing, okay, well, that was stupid of me. I probably shouldn't have talked trash about that. Another kind of um, way that I'll do this in more of the Sigma way is like, if we're watching a show or a movie together and I see a girl that some a friend of the girl tries to come in and talk trash let's talk about californication or something like that with mm -hmm. hank moody like if someone were to come in and talk trash to a girl and if that girl listens and goes yeah you're right he's trash that's when i i'll literally just say what we're watching i'll be like uh, i don't like that girl and if the girl's like well why is i'll be like she's talking she's talking trash about her man she should have his back 
a different aspect I might do is if a girl talks trash to a friend in a movie or a show and that girl goes and she sticks up for the man and I'll go see that's that's a good quality woman right now. She has her man's back. And so I'm planting seeds in the same way, but I'm using it in an indirect way, a different life circumstances, a TV show, a movie that while we're seeing that she's starting to learn my boundaries as well based off of just being around me, getting to know me. Because when I see stuff like that, I'll call it out. I'll be like, oh, that's that girl is like, there's no loyalty there. Like, oh, she got mad at her man. Now she's going out to the club. And I'm like, that is a trash girl. Like, I'll say stuff like that when I'm watching. And girls then that are with me are learning my preferences. But I'm not directly trying to control them. I'm controlling the movie characters or the TV show Mm -hmm. characters. And she's still learning my boundaries. But it's not in a you're a controlling you can't you can't, you know, hang out with these people or you're not gonna be mine. I can use that other examples to explain my philosophy. And then that girl starts to learn, oh, okay, wow. So Adam likes when a girl has his back and he doesn't talk trash. And that's the type of times where I'll take those opportunities to educate her about my boundaries without directly telling her you have to do this or you lose me. And so now again, right, that's kind of my invisible boundary where now I'm putting it out there and now I'm seeing does her behavior improve or not? Is her, her character growing? Is her char- is she developing these traits of, oh, I can have my man's back even if I'm emotionally frustrated with him at the time because long term, it's important to have his back. So I'll use those examples to kind of build my boundaries as well. That's actually genius. I love that. You're priming them and programming them at the same time while watching a show or a movie. Yeah. And and I think actually that's another important point that you started with of guys knowing your boundaries from the start, right? Knowing what you tolerate and what you won't tolerate. Have a list of things that you like for women to do because now when I have the end goal in mind, I can work backwards and now I can use these opportunities when I see things up come up in real life that I can talk about. Or if this girl tells me about her friend who is cheating on her man and all that stuff and she tells me the story and I'm listening, I'm like, Eh, man, I don't see. I just don't respect that. She's mad at her man and she takes it out by going out and going to the club and going, you know, to try to show him right. I go that that to me is such a turnoff. I can use stories of her friends to, again, give her the the foundation, the building blocks of what she needs to build if she wants commitment from me. Yeah, yeah, that's um, that's something I agree with. So. Let's see. Number three. No entertaining messages you receive from other men on social media. If a girl is in a relationship with you, fellas. Now, if you're just dating her, who gives a fuck? The best slaves are the ones that think they're free. Okay. Don't let that fly over your head. But if she's in a relationship with you. She should not entertain or even respond to any messages that men send her. None. Not even a, sorry, I have a boyfriend. Sorry, I'm talking to someone. No. She leaves those motherfuckers on read. Would you want your girl entertaining a guy like me and Adam? Fuck no, you wouldn't. You know exactly what we're going to do, especially with the game we have. Boyfriends don't stop or scare away most men, fellas. They don't. They don't give a fuck if a girl has a boyfriend. I don't care. Most of the times, I don't even know if she has a boyfriend. They hide it very well. Sometimes they'll tell me after they already slept with me. They will still attempt to find that chink in your girl's armor. So why even give them that opportunity to do to do so? I'm not saying to ever go through your girl's phone because that's just beta fucking insecure behavior. Let her know if you catch her messaging another man, it's over. That's it. It's your job to teach your girl as to why that is unacceptable. Ask her how she would feel if you yourself were messaging a bunch of girls that were hitting you up. She wouldn't like it. No matter what they tell you, a girl would not condone that behavior whatsoever. A girl who truly loves you, she won't even entertain another man. It doesn't even cross her mind. She leaves them on read. But once again, the younger girls... They're easier to program. They don't know the game yet. So you have to teach them this. Hey, listen, babe, if a guy ever messages you, don't even respond. You leave them on read. 
okay? Because a guy like me, a guy like you, Adam, someone that has a good mouthpiece, that has game, that has status, if they give us any wiggle room, whether on social media if we're messaging them or out in person, if they give us any room, any leeway, we know we can get inside that. We know it. But if yeah, a girl and- tells us, right, no, sorry, have a boyfriend, and she walks away, I'm done. I'm walking away. I've had girls say that to me before. I respect that. I walk away. I'm done. I'm not going to keep pushing my limits. Yeah, that's very different, too, than if she goes, well, I have a boyfriend, so I probably shouldn't be talking to you. That is a signal for every player to know I'm in. Like if a girl gives you any opening like that, well, I have a boyfriend. I probably shouldn't be talking to you. You already know that she's dancing with fire. She's like, I shouldn't do it, but I'm going to continue doing it. And another thing too, like Zara mentioned, the boyfriend doesn't scare a lot of guys off. To be honest, in my biggest player days, when a girl has a boyfriend, it's like going, okay, there's only one goalie that I have to beat. Mm -hmm. All I have to do is out game this one dude and I'm in. So, a lot of times, right, that is, yeah, that's not going to scare guys off. I know it's a boyfriend, but it's it's about how she <laughs> how she accepts that or displays it to you. Because, again, like the girls, they're like, you know, I'm talking to someone. You shouldn't be talking to me. And she kind of <laughs> smiles at you. It's like, I already know. It's like, I feel bad for the dude, but he has no shot. She is not going to stick with it. She's not going to be loyal to this type of guy. Um And I guess an example, too, would be if I did see a girl messaging or talking to another guy, like texting another guy or or messaging him. And I'm like, oh, who's that? And she's like, oh, it's just a friend. It's just Justin or something like that. Again, instead of me being like, well, you you never, never. That's when I would just be like, oh, okay, cool. So obviously we, you know, obviously we can just talk to and text whoever we want. Um, That's good to know. And now in my mind, I'm going now in my mind, I'm going, all right, cool. Like you want to open up this bag of worms. Right. And that's again, why it's so important for your commitment to be really, really hard for a girl to earn. Because when a girl does that like that, she's messaging other guys. I'm just like, oh, okay, cool. Green light. We can message whoever we want. Awesome. Now I know our, this is our, uh, this is what we're allowing. Cool. And now I'm like, all right, game on. I am no longer committing myself to you because you're not committing myself or you're not con- committing yourself to me, but I'm not going to freak out on her. I'm just going to go, okay, the rules have changed. This is our new rules. You want to play this game? Cool. Yeah, that's very interesting. You said that. And a lot of younger girls, they'll find the dumbest reasons to cheat on you. They'll find the dumbest reasons to cheat on you acting out on their emotions. They just got into an argument with their beta cuck boyfriend, fiance, whoever. I have a girl now who is, I think she's 20 years old, dating some guy, living with him. Anytime they get in a fight, argument, guess who she's calling? She's calling me. I know how to play my position. I'm not investing in a girl that's already in a relationship. It's just she calls me. Could be midnight. Hey, what are you doing? Nothing. I'm home. Can I come over? Yeah, sure. Of course you can come over. I already know what's going on. I could tell with the emotions, yeah. the, the rattle in her voice. They just got into an argument. Cool. Come over. That's it. That's and, why I and, tell you guys, do not date young girls. Do not get in a relationship with young girls. You guys still don't listen to us. You still don't fucking listen to us. <laughs> what were you going to say, Adam? Uh, you, you, it was something you just mentioned about the... Uh... You just said young girl. They cheat for the dumbest reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So like, yeah, in those scenarios with that guy, right? A hundred percent. I can already tell that guy did not make commitment hard for that girl to earn. Because if it was really hard for her to earn, she wouldn't be so easily ready to go. All right, we're in a fight now. I'm going to call Zara. Right. If that guy really made it hard for her to to earn his affection and commitment, then that's the type of thing she wouldn't risk. So when that type of stuff happening happens, that's to me going, yeah, see, this guy did not make it way hard enough for her to earn his commitment. So now she doesn't respect the commitment. Adam, you're absolutely right. This is why I love you because you're absolutely right. And she told me this. He basically had her move in with him. He's been in this profession for quite some time. He's making good money. Quickly had her move into his place. 
quickly got in a relationship with her, might even end up marrying this girl. But guess what? She didn't have to work for shit. He made it easy for her. And what do we tell you guys? Easy come, easy go. But if you make it hard for a girl, this is why they put men through boot camp. This is why they put fraternities, sororities through hazing. They make it hard for them. Because when you're bonded to that group in the end, you don't want to leave. Because you remember the hardships. You remember the, the, the hoops that you had to jump through. The pain you had to go through just to make it to be in this position, to be in this group. So it, yeah. it, it's not going to be easy for you to leave now. You understand what I'm saying? So yep. if you make it easy for a girl to be with you, come in your life, get in a relationship with you, marry her, come live with me, invest all this money into her. She's like, I don't have to do shit. She's like, I didn't like, fuck it. This shit's easy. Let me go cheat on him. He's not going to fucking break up with me. Yeah. And we talk about all the time, the lottery winners, easy come, easy go. All right. If it's, if it's easy for her to get your commitment, it's easier for her to, to lose your commitment too. Like, it, you've got to make it really, really hard for her so that she finally wins it. She built that business up to where she's making millions of dollars now, right? That now she appreciates that business rather than she get got a, a couple million dollars from the lottery. Easy come, easy go. So when you're establishing this with women, it's that's why it's so important. I say it all the time and guys are like, well, that's so... I talk about power games all the time, about not over chasing, not over double texting or all this type of stuff. Make her come to you. And guys are like, yeah, well, that's that's so much work. That's, you know, all that stuff. It's like, yeah, that's exactly why it should be so much work. So she understands the value that you're bringing to our life. When you're easy, it's too easy. Women have it way too easy with way too many men. Being another easy guy does not, it doesn't, you, you're in the same category as easy guys. You have to be hard. You have to make her really work for this or else it's it's just gonna it, it can like the three little pigs she's gonna the the big bad wolf is gonna blow your house of straw down super easy with one big huff and puff because it was a flimsy foundation that was built on yeah and i've, I've learned this to be true the harder i make them work to want to be with me to get me away from the other girls i'm dating now they value me even more wow he picked me out of all those girls like, I remember I had to work for this guy just to see him, just to hang out with him, just to get in a relationship with him. I remember what I had to, you know, I had to damn near like lose my boyfriend just to be with this guy. Like, I actually ditched my boyfriend to be with him. Right. Some guys say that if she cheats on her boyfriend, she'll cheat on you as well. Listen, like, you know, 50 percent of the times. Yes. OK. But if she leaves her boyfriend for you, she took that sacrifice. Was that easy for her to do, right? This is how I'm viewing it. Was that easy for her to do? That was a big investment on her part to be with you now and ditch her boyfriend and everything he was doing for her. So in my opinion, it's harder for her to leave you. You're making yeah. it harder for her. Yeah, that is, that's a really, I think I agree with that 50-50 type thing because on one hand, past be past behavior is most predictive of future behavior. So she was a cheater once she's going to cheat again. On the other hand though, right. With something like game, there's just so many guys that do so many things wrong that it's like, okay, maybe she cheated because she's a cheater. Other times it's like, I know some of the women that people would say, this is the best girl ever. The most goody, good girl. She would never do that. She's a great woman. It's like, if she's in that scenario with a guy that has the right game, Women are women, they're human beings, their desires take over. So yeah, on one hand, it might be she's a cheater, she's always going to cheat. But on the other hand, it might also be that she was with some beta and now she's with a guy that has game, he has boundaries, he has masculinity. And then at that point, well, maybe she won't be cheating on you. So it is a that, that's a that's a tough one. I've, I've often wondered that too, is like, is this girl just a cheater or do I just have such mad game that she was willing to cheat for me? And that is a question that I don't know that we could ever answer, but it's an interesting one because I know the women that you would think are the most pure women, but if they meet that right guy at the right time and he has that right energy, it's game over. She's she's going to indulge like Eve in the Garden of Eden. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, and, that, and, that's, and another, that's an interesting an, one. 
another secret, Adam, I want guys to know. So if the girl is dating a beta male, like she's in a relationship with a straight up beta male, you could tell. OK, with everything we, we told you, you guys know who the beta males are. She's not going to leave him for another beta male. She's not going to cheat on that guy with another beta male. You have to be that alpha male. OK, now. If she leaves a relationship, she meets you and she tells you how much of an asshole this guy was. If she describes him as the typical alpha male, you are the beta male. <laughs> okay? You're the beta male she's going after now because women usually date the opposite of who they were in a relationship with. They date the opposite. So if they weren't getting that masculine energy, the guy with the boundaries before when they were with that beta male, Guess what? You're that guy now they want to they want to fuck around with and vice versa. If you were that alpha male that didn't show her appreciation, like you had a game, you maintain frame. But eventually, you know, who knows? Maybe you talk, talk to her a certain way. You cheated on her. She's going to go to the beta male now. She's going to get those qualities that you didn't give her that the beta male does. The safety net boost her ego back up, boost her confidence back up. The guy that's not going to cheat on her. So remember that, fellas. So if she's describing this guy as, oh, he had a girlfriend. He wouldn't leave me for her. Like, I really liked him. He was an asshole. You're the beta male she's going after now. That was the alpha male she wanted. That's a little key fact that I want you guys to understand. Okay? So you could tell which side of the spectrum you're on, but it can also work in your favor. Like with me, with that girl I told you about who gossip, she was with the beta male for five years. Only guy she's ever slept with. I knew I had to amp up the alpha alpha male qualities. And this is when AMS first came out, alpha male strategies. I was watching his videos and shout out to him because with his help, everything he was teaching, all the guys out there, the red pill community, I used on her and it worked. But she was also yeah. 21, young. She I, ended do, up I like his game. He has, he, his game is very much about mindset. And I, I totally agree. He has really good mindset mm -hmm. game. I I haven't watched a ton of his stuff, but every time I've seen videos, I haven't disagreed with anything I've heard him say. Yes, absolutely. And it worked for me. It worked for me. But until I took it too seriously, I kept listening to the red pill and I didn't show her appreciation. I didn't set certain boundaries that we're telling you guys now. And eventually COVID hit and it fell apart. But she never cheated on me just because it took her six months to cheat on her boyfriend with me mm -hmm. doesn't mean that she was going to cheat on me before she broke up with me. She had enough respect for me to end it first and then go do what she wanted to do. So not all girls monkey branch, not all girls cheat. They might have a guy lined up already that they know, okay, I'm going to go to this beta male now to give me those qualities, those things that I was missing. They might have him in mind, but doesn't mean they're all going to cheat on you, fellas. Some women just have enough respect for you. Where they say, hey, listen, this just isn't working out anymore. Come get your stuff from my place. Boom, and it's over. Whatever they do after that, I don't give a fuck. Did you okay. have one on here about clubs? Grand yeah, so. Clubs? Okay, so yeah, no, let's, talk, let's talk about yeah, that one. Yeah, no, I know you're going to love this one, Adam. Okay, no clubbing or engaging in activities that single women engage in. Now, why is this important? Because your girl, she's going to test you. They're going to give you something called an investment test. Let's see how well he wants to protect this investment. Let's see how well he still cares about this relationship. Is he going to let me go to a bachelorette party? Is he going to let me go to Las Vegas or Miami? Number one, if your girl goes to Miami, she's already cheating on you, bro. If you let your girl, I want you guys to, to think of, I want you guys to, to think of a time that you were dating a girl and she went to Miami. She was getting that hot beef injection. There. Or Vegas. <laughs> or Vegas. There's no reason why a girl that you are in a relationship with should go to Miami or want to go to Miami. Now, if she goes on vacation with her parents, her siblings, and they do this every year. I don't give a fuck. Have a great time. But if she wants to engage in single women activities, clubbing, drinking all the time, going to the going to the bar. No, nah, I'm good. Like, you know what? I just listen. If you go, we're going to have to break up. But why? You don't trust me. No, no, I do trust you. I just don't trust the environment that you're putting yourself in. There's going to be a lot of alcohol, loud music, guys approaching you. It's my job to protect you and this relationship. It's my job to protect this investment. Boom. That's what she wants to hear. 
Because if you just let her go and you try not to act like you're insecure, well, guess what? Now that you're granting her those types of freedoms, what did we tell you guys in the book game podcast from the book Influence? Certain freedoms that have been granted and you try taking those freedoms away now, there's going to be a hot variety of hell to pay. That's in the book. That's in the book called The Power of Influence. This applies to relationships. If you grant her certain freedoms to do, certain things that are going to jeopardize the relationship, like having girls night out or going to the club, Miami, guess what? You can't take that away from her anymore. It's too late. It's too fucking late. That's it. That's why it's best for her not to do those in the first place and establish those boundaries. And if she still wants to go, fuck it, let her go. She was going to cheat yeah. on you at that in that fraternity party anyways. So who gives a fuck? Yeah, yeah. And that's where, let's just say a girl wants to go clubbing with her girlfriends. And in that scenario, she's like, hey, I want to go clubbing or I'm going to go to the club with my girlfriends or something like that. How I would handle that is I would say, hey, you can do whatever you want. That's The choice is yours. And I would just say, but let me ask you a question. She's like, what's that? And I go, okay, would you care if I hung out with a bunch of my ex-girlfriends? Or would you care if I went out with a bunch of my buddies to a bunch of strip clubs? And I wanna, I'm going to let her give her reasoning about whether she would care or not. And I would say, hey, if I'm hanging out with my ex-girlfriends, you know there's going to be a good chance of flirting and potentially sex. You know that if I'm going out with a bunch of at strip clubs with a bunch of buddies, you know there's going to be a bunch of promiscuous women wanting to flirt and wanting to try to ha do sexual things with me. I say, now, if you're not okay with that, well, just know whenever you go out to the the clubbing, all the guys in those rooms are going to be wanting to flirt with you, wanting to get sexual attention from you, and wanting to sleep with you. So I give her that scenario and I put it in a way that she can understand. I go, if you still choose that you want to go, that is your choice. But just understand that choice you're making now goes, all right, well, now I don't feel that I have to live by any boundaries myself either. So now if I want to hang out with some old girlfriends, it's cool. If I want to go to strip clubs with my buddies, it's cool. The choice is yours. And now she knows there's going to be consequences with this choice, but I'm going to let her make that choice. I'm going to let her have that freedom to choose. And now if she makes that choice to go out clubbing, it's going to be way harder to hang out with me. And I have now turned off all my rules. I will hang out if a girl wants it. If I've had a pass with a girl and she wants to hang out with me, nothing going to stop me then. Because she's now established the consequences. And she went in knowing there's going to be consequences. And she decided to make that choice anyway. Most women wouldn't make the choice of going all right well i don't think i need to go clubbing anymore <laughs> mm -hmm. i don't think i need to go i don't think i need to go buy those 15 dollars drinks at the club anymore and twerk around on the club because now she's seen the consequences but again i'm allowing her that choice i'm just building the blocks around going that choice will have repercussions again it's your choice to make even if it's a work party especially if they work for some company some corporation in the city, you don't think there's going to be guys that she works with that are going to try hitting on her, getting with her just because she's married or she has a boyfriend. Why the fuck does she want to go? Who the fuck ever wants to go to a work party? Number one. To, I never understood that concept. Like, I don't even want to see you guys after work. Why the fuck would I go drinking with you? I'm good. Especially if I'm in a relationship like now nah, I got shit to do. Sorry. Like, to me, that's just out of out of the respect for the girl. You know what I mean? So you have to put in perspective, like you said, OK, if, she, if you want to go, you want to go out to a club. I'll tell you what, I'm going to get ready. I'm going to put on the nicest shirt I have, the nicest jeans, nicest, nicest shoes. I'm going to look fresh as fuck. Me and my boy, we're going to go out to this Colombian lounge where they have nothing but Latin music and we're going to get a bottle of tequila. No, I don't I don't want you going. Why not? But isn't that the same thing? We're just going to go have fun because she knows what's going to happen. Girls are going to start approaching us. There's tequila, alcohol, loud music. 
So you guys have to put it into a perspective that they can understand. You can't just say, no, I don't want you going. You have to yeah. be able to express yourself and make them understand why. Yeah, and in a very in a calm way too. And it's that it, because right, if you come down going, no, you're going out of the clubs again. I forbid that. You know that's a boundary of mine, and you cannot cross that. Right? That is going to make her feel like she's making the right choice by still going out to the club. Look how controlling this guy is. Look how emotional he is. Look how reactive. And then she's going to have a chip on her shoulder when she goes out too, going, God, my boyfriend was so, con so controlling. I'm going to let loose tonight versus when you sit her down calmly and have this and just say, hey, here are the scenarios. Or you could even say, all right, well, you going out to that work party, drinking with all your coworkers. What are the pros and cons of that? What, it, what, is, what is your goal for doing that? And, and listen to her, give her those and see if she can make enough pros that outweigh the cons of what could happen. But again, I would sit down and, and calmly explain the scenario. And then I would calmly, whatever she chooses, let her make that choice. But now she knows from a calm place of the pros and cons and the potential repercussions of her making that choice. I'll give you guys a quick story. Me and my boy are at this Latin lounge, this Colombian lounge. We're downstairs, loud music, got, got a bottle of tequila. All eyes are on us. We're the only white boys there. My boy's dancing with this beautiful Latin girl. Unbeknownst to me, her girlfriend was there with her. I approach her girlfriend. I'm talking to her, chatting her up. She gives me her number, tells me to go to this place after on Google Maps. Like, put this on your phone. There's another great spot around here. Then I find out she has a boyfriend. Her boyfriend picked both of them up from this lounge. Like he parked in front of the fucking lounge, gets out, kisses her, gets in the car with her. And then I asked her friend, I was like, who's that guy? She's like, oh, that's her boyfriend. And she's like, I fucking hate him. Like he's such an asshole. She's like, I can't stand him. Right. So that could be you. That girl could be talking shit about you. You understand how impressionable women are? You guys, uh, do you guys fucking get it? If her friend doesn't like you and she wants to go out with this girl, she doesn't give a fuck if she has a boyfriend or not. That's girl code. She'll have her back. But it was that easy. Did I ever hang out with that girl? No. Never hung out with her. But why would you want to put your girl in a situation like that? Why? Yeah. So you guys have to think about that. Hey, it's Adam. And that wraps a part one of setting boundaries with women czar and i go into a lot more of these as well that will be coming out in a part two thank you guys for listening and as a reminder march 6 is our next five week coaching program the link below in the show notes get your application in i apologize for everyone that's gotten their application in i have not sent out any emails yet i'm going to get around to doing that in the next day or two so be on the lookout for those all right, take care.